Klikkelig. Thank you and welcome. It is awesome to see each and every single one of you. It's fantastic that you're here. Um, and I'm going to talk about I'm going to talk about why we are all here. I think it's important to start with a big question. So why on earth should we interest ourselves with happiness at work? That's what I want to talk about. Before we do that, I do want to know a little bit about you guys. So just out of curiosity, how many of you have been to one of our previous conferences? Take a look. Oh, that's a lot of you. And how many of you are here for the first time? Yes, you have a, we have a treat in store for you. It's going to be awesome. Uh, how many of you are coming to our workshops tomorrow? Yes, that's an excellent chance to get practical and go even more in depth with, with everything, everything we've learned here. And, and just out of curiosity, how many of you think that happiness at work is a pretty good idea? <laughs> I know, right? Why else would you be here? And of course, we agree. So this is, this is us. Um, this is us. That, that's us. Uh, we're Woohoo Inc. We're a, a small company, three people, based right here in Copenhagen. And for the last 15 years, we've been making people happy at work. Uh, we actually just had our 15th company anniversary. We don't really know when the company started, so we just say May 1st, because that's the International Day of work, Workers, right? So we just had our 15-year company anniversary on May 1st this month. And what we worked for, our, sorry, <laughs> our vision, is a world where happiness at, rule, uh, happiness at work is the rule and not the exception. I don't have to tell you we're not quite there yet, but we're definitely getting there. And I think it's, it's, it's easy to get, when you, when you look at the state of, of workplaces around the world, it's easy to get very pessimistic uh, because there are a lot of work, bad workplaces out there, but I think we forget how far we've come and how much better workplaces today are compared to workplaces 25 years ago, 50 years ago, 100 years ago. There is so much movement happening, so many changes that are making workplaces better and better and better. And we definitely see that. Um, we see a huge interest. We get hired by these as just some of our clients around the world. Where have, we've done workshops, speeches, management trainings, um, and we see a huge interest in the topic uh, from the books we've written, Happy Hours 9 to 5, the first one, and the last one, which just came out in November last year, which is called Leading with Happiness. And, and we're based in Denmark. We do have most of our clients in Denmark. But we also do this all over the world. We've been to these 48 countries to talk about happiness at work. I was just in China for the first time to speak there to a group of 100 managers, and it was awesome. So all over the world, more and more companies are focusing on happiness at work, and I think that is amazing. Why are they doing that? I think there are some major trends driving this. Uh, the fact that more and more work now is knowledge work rather than production is definitely playing into this. Uh, when people work with their minds, their emotional state really, really matters because how you feel really affects how you think. And if you feel like crap, you think like crap. But if you feel good, you think good. Um, and that's why it matters. Uh, war for talent. Uh, how many of you work in a workplace where it's getting harder and harder to find good new employees? A lot of you. There is, there's unemployment in low, is low in many, many countries now, and it's hard to find good, skilled employees. If you have a happy workplace, people come to you, you attract them, and it's easier to find new talent. Uh, those darn millennials. <laughs> How many of you work in an organization that, that's hiring a lot of millennials? Yes. I just did a speech at a company, in a big consulting company in, uh, in Eastern Europe, and they said that 60% of the people they hire now are millennials. Uh, I just did a speech for SAP in Barcelona, and 90% of their employees in that sales team are millennials. And millennial, millennials want good jobs. They want meaningful work. They want recognition for the work they do. They want a good career path. They want to have fun at work. If you can't give them that, they're going to go work for the competition. Increased competition. How many of you work in a workplace that's facing more and more competition, tougher and tougher competition? Exactly. Um, and when you're doing that, you need your people to perform, perform at their best, and they do that when they're happy. And then the demand for innovation, we constantly need to come up with new ideas, new processes, new ways of doing things, and we can do that much better when people are happy at work. So these five trends are, are I think, what's driving this. And the interest in happiness at work all over the world has never been higher. I think that's amazing. And that's what I want to talk about this morning, is why... Is that important? And I know I don't need to convince you guys, 
but maybe I can give you the tools to convince others. Maybe you can get the tools to convince the leadership in your organization to focus more on happiness at work. Maybe you can get some knowledge that you can use to focus more on this and keep going, even if, even if your company faces tough times, maybe. So what I want to talk about this morning is that happiness at work is really good for three major groups. Employees, for the company, but also for society. I think that's an often overlooked angle that we're going to talk about a little bit more. And we're going to look at each of these three and say exactly why is happiness at work good for the people, for the company and the bottom line, and for the wider society. Does that sound like a plan? Awesome. Let's start with the employees. Um, and there is a ton of research on why happiness at work is really, really good for the workers, for the employees, why it makes a really big difference. What about, what about you personally? Could you think about just for a second, um, is being happy at work important to you? And if so, why? Couldn't you just have a job you hate it? Couldn't you just have a job that you don't really care much about and then you know, just do it for the money and then go home and be happy in your spare time? And if not, why not? What do you personally get out of being happy at work? And I can't I can tell you that. I can't give you the answer to this question because this is very individual. This is very different from person to person. We're all different people. We have different careers, different work situations, different ambitions, different dreams, different goals. So I can't answer this question for you, but it's just a really important question for you to think about and to help people in your organization think about. Have this conversation in your teams, in your organizations. Is being happy at work important to you? And if so, why? And there is no right or wrong answer. Um, the best answer I've ever heard was a nurse. I spoke at a conference for 300 nurses, and a nurse said, uh, it's very important to me to be happy at work because I have three kids. And if I go to work every day, and then I come home from work every day stressed and angry and tired and frustrated, and then I go back the next day, what am I teaching my kids? What values are, am I giving my children? And that's why she absolutely needed to be happy at work. I can't answer the question for you. You can't answer the question for anyone else in your organization, but it's just a really important question to consider. That being said, there's a ton of research on why happiness at work matters for the individual. These are just some of the references. Where you're getting all the slides, so you, you'll be getting all of these. And I think you can sort of sum it up in four headlines. First of all, time. Have you ever thought about what you will spend your time on over your entire lifetime? from you're born until you die, from cradle to grave, 80-something years on average now in the modern world, um, a little more for women, a little less for men. Women live longer, we know that. Have you thought about that? They've done huge time studies, they're called, and it turns out that over our entire lifetimes, the number one thing we spend time on is sleep, and number two is work. Work is number two, that's why we spend most of our waking hours. Does anybody want to guess what number three is? Television, television, isn't that scary? Television, and these days before television, TV, and Netflix, and HBO, and all of that. But that's where we spend the third most time, I think that's a little scary, yeah. I did a speech at a Danish bank, and I asked the audience, so does anybody know what number three is? And a guy said, sex. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, no, <laughs> it's not. But please come up after the speech and give me some tips. Um, <laughs> So work is where we spend most of our waking hours over our entire lifetimes. And I believe that when you spend that much of your life on anything, it should be something you enjoy, okay? Uh, not something you hate, and not, not even something you're just indifferent about. It should be something you actively enjoy. Not necessarily something where you're ridiculously happy every day, but just something where, you know, most days you come home and you say, today was a good day, and you're excited to go back the next day. Um, so time, I think, is, is, is really, really important here. Um, secondly, health. Um, and, and when I look at the research, I'm not necessarily sure we can say that, that people who are happy at work are healthier, but what we can say for sure, without a doubt, is that people who are unhappy at work are unhealthier. And there are some huge studies that show that people who hate their jobs have a much higher risk of getting cancer, heart disease, uh, stress and depression, and type 2 diabetes, just to mention a few diseases. So being unhappy at work can absolutely make you sick. It can ultimately kill you. 
Um, and that's another reason why being happy at work is good for people. Secondly, happiness in life. Uh, everybody wants to lead a happy and meaningful life, right? So the question is, of course, what is it that makes us happy in life? And we know that one of the most important things is, of, good, of course, good relationships, right? For instance, a good romantic relationship turns out to be the, mo the, the most important thing that makes us happy in life. And we can see how, uh, how, how much it matters because it turns out that men who live in a good romantic relationship, on average, live six and a half years longer than men who don't. Ladies, you only get two and a half years, I'm sorry. <laughs> But like I said, you live longer to begin with. So uh, that shows the importance of, of, uh, of good, a good romantic relationship, a good marriage, a good relationship with your boyfriend, girlfriend, spouse. Yeah. I did a speech at a, at a Danish workplace and I told them this, men who live in a good romantic relationship live six and a half years longer. And then I heard a woman somewhere in the audience and very quietly to herself, she said, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what that was about. I'm still, to this day, I'm still curious. <laughs> um, second, uh, another thing that really, um, I mean, social relationships, so your, your spouse, your, your partner, also friends, uh, close friendships are really important. But it also turns out that one of the things that really matter, matters for our happiness in life is a good and meaningful job. A good and meaningful job. So a job you enjoy, where you do something that is important to you, something that matters, something that has meaning and purpose for you. Um, it's not just a job, you actually care about what you're doing. A good and meaningful job is one of the most important things that makes us happy in life, and that's another reason why it matters. Um, and finally, success. Everybody wants to be successful in what they do, and it turns out that if you are successful, you, uh, sorry, if you are happy at work, you probably will be more successful. Uh, one of my favorite happiness researchers is Ed Diener. Uh, Ed is awesome, um, and he, uh, he's done a lot of research on this, and he said, in the workplace, we know that Happiness causes more productive and more effective workers. There's a very practical study on this. I'm going to give you, a, I'm going to give you some homework. Here's some math. Uh, see if you can add up the following five numbers and get the correct result. Anybody got it? Anybody got it? 232. <laughs> I cheated. I, I used a calculator. So at uh, the University of Warwick in London, they did a study where they took volunteers in, they gave them, they had to add five two-digit numbers, uh, and they could actually use pen and pencil, so uh, paper and pencil. Uh, so they had a little bit of help there. And then they checked how many did it correctly. And for some of the volunteers, they made them happy before they started adding numbers. So they would maybe give them some chocolate, maybe show them a funny YouTube video, but just a little thing to make those people happier. And it turns out that when you do that, the happy people actually solve more correct uh, math problems and can do this, uh, uh, get more right answers than people who are not made happy beforehand. Um, they also, and this is kind of interesting, they also have more attempts. Uh, they, they try more times to add these numbers up, so actually more persistent in what they do. So even on something as you know, basic as adding two-digit numbers on pen and paper. With pen and paper, you actually do that more effectively and more correctly and faster when you are happy than when you're not happy. And this is just when they give you a piece of chocolate or show you a funny video. Uh, what about when you're unhappy? They wanted to study that too, but it's not like you can take volunteers in and then make them unhappy. As, as they note in the research paper, for ethical reasons, it is not feasible in experiments to induce huge changes in the happiness of people's lives. Um, so what they did instead was they looked at people, volunteers who had had a recent bad life event. So maybe uh, you know, somebody in the family is sick, maybe something bad happened to you, maybe you lost a family member or a friend. So a recent bad life experience. And it turns out that when people had a, re a recent bad life experience, they were actually worse. They were now less happy, and now they are worse at adding two-digit numbers. So that's just one example of the kind of studies they've done. Um, there are so many things we do better when we're happy. You can think about what happiness at work does to your job performance. How are you better at your job when you're happy, when you're having a good day, when you're enjoying yourself? And these are some of the results that we've been able to find. So we know that happy people are more productive. They get more work done in the same amount of time. We know that happy people are more creative. Uh, we know that happy people are more helpful. We know that happy salespeople sell more, and so on and so on and so on. Al almost every single metric you can imagine Uh, happy people outperform those who are less happy. And that, of course, ends up to make, tends to make them more successful. My favorite study on, on uh, happiness in life is the Grant study. Have you guys heard about the Grant study? 
Uh, it's been running for almost 80 years. It's the longest longitudinal study in, 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 in all of the research. Um, and they've been following a, a graduating class from Harvard for almost 80 years now and studied everything about these men. How happy are they? How are their, their relationships? Are they married? Are they divorced? Do they have kids? How's their health? Um, their, their lifetime income? How much money do they make? They measure everything about these men, including, and I'm not kidding, hanging length of the scrotum. Hanging length of the testicles is one of the things they measure on these men. Why? I don't know. I think it's awesome that they do. <laughs> and one of the things they found in this study is that happiness matters for your success. For instance, they found that those who had warm relationships earned an average of $141,000 a year more at their peak salaries. That's a pretty significant difference, which comes from having warm relationships, which makes you happy, which makes you more successful. So I think the point here is that a lot of people think that, you know, I'll work really hard, that will make me successful, and success will make me happy. But the research shows that it's actually more strongly uh, connected the other way around, that if you have a job you love, you will do a really good job, and that will make you more successful in the end. Um, and I think that is really, really good to remember. So the point here is that being happy at work is really, really good for the individual. Um, and I think it's also, here's another point that I want to make, which is that happiness also makes you a better person. Um, a lot of people have this preconceived notion that when you're happy, you're probably a little selfish. You're probably a little egotistical, focused on yourself. Maybe you're a little shallow. Maybe you're a little naive. Uh, the French uh, writer Gustave Flaubert had a saying that there are only three things you need in order to be happy. You must be selfish, have good health, and be stupid. <laughs> And I thought that was a very French attitude. <laughs> um, but it turns out that it's actually the other way around. So not only does happiness make you more successful, when you are, it, it, it's been shown that people who are happy are more generous, they're more helpful towards others, more likely to help strangers, they're less biased, uh, have less biases about people who are different from themselves, so on, on every single, and on a lot of different metrics, uh, happy people are simply better people, engage in more uh, what's called pro-social behavior. Um, and, and, and are more generous and helpful towards others. So being happy at work is good for you, good for the individual, and also makes you a better person. It's also good for the business, and there is a ton of research on that. Uh, for my latest book, Leading with Happiness, I interviewed a lot of leaders, um, uh, really good leaders for this book, and, and one of them is this guy, Ben Zander, who is a, a conductor. And you know that a lot of conductors are dictators who rule their orchestra with fear and an iron fist. He's the opposite. He says, you know, happy musicians play better music. And one of the things he told me was this. Uh, what makes an effective business is the same thing, thing that makes an effective orchestra. People who want to be there, who give everything they have, who are having a wonderful time doing it, whose eyes are shining, and who are giving out energy to people around them. And I thought that was a wonderful attitude. And that's what he's created in the orchestras he conducts. Um, going to the research, this is from Kerry Cooper from the University of Manchester, who says there is a significant amount of research that organizations with high personal well-being, happiness, will get better results. This is from his study. Uh, they plotted 750 people from the same organization, and what they found was that an increase of one point on the personal well-being scale from one to five is associated with an increase in productivity of 8.8%. There is so much research that shows this. One of my favorite examples is this book, The Service Profit Chain, where they basically say that uh, happy employees will give great service. Uh, that creates happy, I'm, that we're missing the happy employees at the top. Happy employees give great service, that makes the customers happy, that makes the customers loyal so they come back, and that way we have higher profits and growth. Uh, one company in, in particular that subscribes to this model is uh, Disney World. How many of you have been to Disney World? How many of you, like me, go to Disney World and instantly turn into a 12-year-old? <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, Walt Disney World are pretty awesome about this, and they know that if they want to create a great customer experience that keeps the, sorry, the guest experience, you're not a customer at Disney World, you're a guest. Um, you, need, you need this kind of thing. You need to make your employees happy so they give great service. I want to show an example of the kind of, a kind of thing you, you can see at Disney World. Uh, this is from the, the, the daily afternoon parade, which is always fun. And here's a security guard, and this is not her job. 
What you see here is not her job to make sure that people don't walk across the street while the parade is going on, but uh, here's how she does it. How awesome is that, right? Um, there's a ton of research on this. There's one study from, uh, from Gallup, who study workplace engagement. They've looked at this a huge study. Almost 200,000 people participated in this study. And they found a lot of cool research, uh, a lot of cool results. Uh, and they found that, of course, happy workplaces have higher productivity, more creativity and innovation, better sales, lower employee turnover, which is really important, especially with a war for talent going on. You want people to stay in your organization. Um, they can attract the best talent, lower absenteeism. Absenteeism can be really expensive for an organization. And when people are happy at work, they're less sick. They call in sick less often. Um, and so on, on, on all of these metrics, happy organizations outperform the unhappy ones. Uh, here's, here's another study on that. Uh, this is of stock prices in the US. And the graph on the bottom is the Russell 3000 index. So that's the, 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 uh, the, the stock price for the average American uh, stock market. Um, and then the yellow graph above that is the stock price for the 100 best workplaces on the Fortune uh, best workplaces list. And you can see that they clearly outperform on the stock price, clearly outperform the uh, average organization. So even on the stock price, happy companies do better. And quite simply put, happy companies make more money. And that's why I think one of the radical, radical shifts that we have to make is that if we want to make more money, we need to focus less on the money and more on the people. If you focus on the money, on the bottom line, you will make less money. And we're going to hear about some, some companies today who really get that. And if you want to make more money, you need to focus on your employees because they will be more productive and your company will get better results. I think one of the CEOs who said this the best is uh, Dan Gilbert from Quicken Loans. Uh, Quiggin Loans is uh, an organization in the U.S. They do mortgages, uh, 20,000 employees based in Detroit. And he said numbers and money follow, they do not lead. And I think that is the simplest and clearest way of putting it, that numbers and money have to follow. It's not what you're there for. Does that make sense? Cool. So happiness at work is good for the individual employee, and you can get people on board uh, with the initiatives for creating a happy workplace by telling them this is going to be good for you. It's good for the company. And that's how you get leaders on, bo on board, by telling them you, we will make more money when people are happy. Um, and also, in a wider context, it's good for a society. And not a lot of people talk about this, but I actually think that if you can raise the levels of happiness at work in a nation, you can actually do a lot of good for the country. One country that is doing, right now, doing this right now is the United Arab Emirates where they, uh, they actually hired a minister for happiness. Have you heard about that? A wonderful lady, uh, Uhud al-Rumi, uh, I met her. She was in Copenhagen a couple of years ago, and she requested a meeting with a lot of people, including me. Um, and she has a wonderful vision for making, uh, making uh, the Emirates a, a happier country, not just richer, but happier. And one of the things they're doing is they're focusing on happiness at work. So for instance, every public sector workplace in the Emirates now has to appoint a chief happiness officer to make sure that the public sector workplaces are happier. They can't make the private companies do that, but a lot of private companies in the Emirates are actually copying that and are also focusing on happiness at work now. And this is a really good idea for a society because we know that if the, the, the companies, the workplaces in a country become happier, we will have improved physical health. People will become less sick, which leads to lower healthcare costs. That's amazing. Less stress and less, uh, fewer problems with mental health. Uh, it seems like in many modern countries, there is a mental health pro uh, uh, a huge mental health problems. More and more people are becoming sick with depression, stress, that kind of thing. And happy workplaces could absolutely help to mitigate that. Higher employee productivity, higher economic growth, also a more effective public sector 
if the public sector companies in a uh, uh, organization in a country are really happy, they will be more effective, and that will save the country a lot of money. So this is good for employees, this is good for the company, this is good for the country. And I do believe that in the end, it's why we're all here. Um, this is a fresco that hangs in the Vatican. It's from the 16th century. It's painted by the, the Italian Renaissance painter, uh, Raphael. And it's called the School of Athens. And in this picture, he has painted a lot of the most famous philosophers from ancient Greece, okay? Uh, so all of the famous guys are in there, uh, and a lot of people that I certainly never heard about. Uh, for instance, in the middle, and, and the more central they are, the more important they are. So for instance, uh, a little bit off to the side, we have Socrates. Uh, in right in the middle, we have uh, Plato and Aristotle. Okay, how many of you have heard about Socrates, Plato, and Aristotle? Everybody's heard about them, right? They're very famous Greek philosophers, did amazing work. Um, and one thing that strikes me as I look around all of these is that nobody looks very happy. All of these people look really, really serious because, you know, philosophy is a serious business. Uh, especially this guy looks like he's having a really bad day. <laughs> but there is one person that looks really happy right behind him. You see that guy writing in his notebook? Um, this is my favorite Greek philosopher. This is Epicurus. How many of you have heard of Epicurus? Oh, a lot of you. Awesome. It's great. Uh, and Epicurus was sort of the first philosopher of happiness. And I think if we want to sort of understand the true purpose, the true nature of happiness, I think it's, looking to his writings is a great place to start. Um, he's pictured writing because he was one of the most prolific writers of any any Greek philosopher. He wrote dozens and dozens of books and almost all of them are gone from history. They were lost, we don't have them. We have a few of his letters that he wrote to followers around the, around the region, but most of it is gone. But he was the first philosopher of happiness. The first philosopher to say that what we are really here for in the world is to be happy. To be happy and make each other happy. That's the central role. It's how we know what's right from wrong. It's how we can tell good from evil is does it make, does it increase happiness in the world or does it decrease happiness in the world? This is from one of his letters where he wrote, happiness is our first good. It is the starting point of every choice and of every aversion. And to it, we always come back because we make feeling the rule by which to judge of every good thing. So if, if your company does something that makes a lot of people unhappy, employees or customers or the world, that's wrong and you shouldn't do it. And if your organization causes a lot of happiness for the employees, for the customers, for the world, then that's amazing and you should do it some more because that's how we judge right from wrong, good from evil, ethical from unethical. In my opinion, happiness at work is fantastic because it makes us more successful, more effective, and happy companies make more money. But in my opinion, happiness at work is also the right thing to do because it is the ultimate why. It is the ultimate reason why we are here, and it's how we can tell right from wrong, good from evil. Happiness is the ultimate why. And that's why I'm so thrilled to see more and more workplaces focusing on this. And there is zero doubt that the happy people will do a better job, and zero doubt that the happy companies will be more successful in their market and outcompete and bankrupt the unhappy companies. And that's why we know for sure, without a doubt, that the future belongs to the happy. Thank you. it is. Haha, -ha. thank you Alexander. Um, you'll be on stage again and uh, there will not be time to ask questions this time, but there's but is a very important question because when you look around in the world and at workplaces, what do you see? What do you hear about? Increasing pressure, higher levels of stress, and we know that happiness actually works. So what is happening here? We'll have to, let's get into that later on. We're but, gonna get very practical. But no, normally we say, uh, we say that uh, we are not a church here. No, we're a cult. We are a cult. And this is the chief preacher, Alexander <laughs> Kelv. Thank you, see you later.